Hi everyone, my name's John, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I've set up this swipe action here. So, to set this up, I've used a plugin, and um, this is the Draggable Elements plugin, and this was actually made by Bubble. So, you can see we've got two different elements. Um, an event and an action here that we can use and each of them has documentation that uh, is actually in the bubble manual so now I'm going to show you how I've set it up for this app so first I created a group that will contain all of the drag and drop um, group other groups and um, I call that group drag here I then added a drag slash drop group that you can see in the containers section of the elements here. I've added that in and I've set that app up so that it was it is constrained within the parent group. So that means that when you use a swipe, they can only swipe left and right. They can't. Otherwise, they would be able to drag it anywhere on the page, which for some apps that might be really useful. Say if you're trying to set up, like be able to drag a group into a bin and then it disappears and it's deleted or something like that. Um, but for now, we just want to we just want it to be able to swipe horizontally. Secondly, I've then made this element droppable, and then when it's dropped it will move back to where it is located when the page is loaded. But I'll come back to this group in a minute and explain a bit more about how I've set up the information that's gonna be inside it. But first I'll just show you, we then have set up two drop areas. So you can get the drop areas here, again in the containers. And I've set up two. I've set up one on the right and one on the left. And the reason I've done that is so that when we swipe to the left, we can drop it in there and some like and then trigger a workflow. If we swipe to the right, we can drop it in there and again trigger the workflow. So because because the drag slash drop group is bigger than the drop areas, I've set the tolerance as intersect. So when someone swipes, they only need to intersect the drop area and let go and it'll do the workflow. Otherwise, you might set it as fit if you want users to get get the group. If Otherwise, you might do it as fit if you want the users to have the drag slash drop group fit exactly in the drop area. Cool, so let's go back to the drag slash drop group and look what's inside it. So for this app, I just set up four static groups that we're gonna flick between. You could set it up to, you know, flick between different entries in a list of data. Um, and you set it up very similar to the way I've done this. So each group, um, group drag one to four, has a number, and that again is one, two, four. So you can see number four is number four, number one is number one. And they have a condition. So on page load, none of them are visible, and they have a condition that when Drag, that when the custom state, when it position that's on the drag slash group one is the same as this group, then this element will be visible. So that custom state is on the drag slash drop group here. And if you press information here, you can have a look at that. So it's called position. It's a number as well. And when the page is loaded, the de default value will be one. So that means that group one on the page load will be shown. 
So the reason I've done that is because of the way the workflows are set up. So the workflows for this are you create one in the workflow tab. So click here, click here to add an event and you can see a drop area has a group dropped in it. So you can set that up. But here's the two I made earlier. So drop area on the left um, has a group dropped in it. So it can get, get a bit confusing, but when we swipe to the left, it will go from number one to number two, then to number three, then to number four. When we swipe right, it will go back down the list. Um, so because of that, we have a condition on both the drop area left and the drop area right. So drop area left, we don't want it to do this action when it's on number four, when its position is number four, because that is the last one in the list. And the same, but not the same on the right group is we don't want the you we don't want anything to change when it's on number one because there's nowhere to go so the action just move my head the action here is to change the state when the drag slash drop group is moved to the left and dropped we will change the state the custom state position, we will take that the current position number and we will add one. And then we'll do similar with when it's dropped in the right group, but we'll minus one. So what that does is, is when this group is picked up and dropped and position equals one, we will add one. So the data, so the custom state position, oh no, not that. The custom state position will become two, which means that group drag two will be shown. And then that's it. That's all you need. And then that's it. So I hope that helps and um, you can actually set it up in different ways. So you could set it up so that um, the drag slash drop group calls data from the um, from the database. And then when a user swipes, it goes to either a random piece of data or the next um, the next entry in the list. Um, but generally, everything will be set up the same. So you just add it in the workflows to change the data source on that drag slash drop group. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or leave me a comment and I will try my best to answer them. Um, this is my first video sort of showing how to set up a plugin. So if you've enjoyed it and want more videos where I show you how to set up other plugins, please let me know. And um, have a great day. Good luck with the plugin and thanks.